Chair. Ms Finlay. Uh, Minister, through the Chair, you've said that you want um, the salmon industry to partly move onshore. Obviously, industry do a significant amount of their work onshore already. Um, how far do you expect to take this in Tasmania and what economic viable examples do you have globally um, where there's evidence that you can take a greater amount of activity onshore? Uh, and with that, uh, what impacts do you expect in terms of needing to get uh, water and power supply to do further farming on shore? Part of your question. So there were a number of questions in your question. So the first part of your question was around how far do you expect to take the industry onshore? To take the industry onshore. Okay. Well, I think we've what we have made clear um, through our salmon plan for the future is that we do want to see industry um, moving either further offshore or indeed moving onto um, land-based farming. I think yeah, yeah. that's been um, one of the clear principles that's um, underpinned the development um, of the salmon industry plan, um, that offshore and, and onshore. So we know that there are some companies that are already investing um, in land-based um, onshore farming, uh, sorry, on land farming, um, recirculating aquaculture systems, um, enabling our salmon to spend, you know, much more of their life on a land-based system and less time um, in our oceans. Um, and, you know, it's certainly not our policy uh, to take farming 100% onshore. Uh, there does need to, to be that balance. Now, there, I think there were three parts to your question. So what just was to clarify the next through one? the chair, just on that specific part of it, so thank you for confirming you're not expecting 100% onshore, but beyond what all the companies currently do onshore, um, what further tasks do you expect them to do onshore? What, 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 what does moving more onshore mean? Well, I think where they are in a position to, especially with those um, recirculating aquaculture systems, um, you know, where they can be... Uh, whether it is possible to be on land, we would expect that they would, and then when they need to be yeah. in the water, so what does more mean? then you would be... Please let the Minister answer. You would be moving offshore. So it's really about sort of... Um, you know, enhancing that early stage grow out and that's where you would have land-based farming. So through you, Chair, just to clarify, all of the companies do early stage grow out on land. That's already given. Um, what do you expect them to do further on land that they're not already doing on land? Uh, but through, you, through you, Minister, I think it is exactly what the Minister has said. We're looking at um, um, what the opportunities might be for further go out. So different companies are at, at different stages of that. Um, and we, under the Salmon Plan, have a, um, um, a proposal to develop a framework. It's a framework for um, reticulated agricultural systems um, and facilities um, so that um, over time... Um, um, so, I, I, the policy settings are there. It enables us through our salmon working um, um, industry group that we're going to establish to have um, um, conversations with industry around what is best practice and, um, and the government's policy parameters. So, just for clarification then through that, so you're not expecting them to do anything different, it's just that some companies may do slightly more time of life on land and you're asking other companies to catch up with that? Are there some companies that already meet your expectations? So it'd be a situation where it might be, you know, that you grow out to a larger size, mm. as right. an example. Do you have a size for you? What size do you expect them to grow out to? Uh, through you, Minister, this is a matter that we would um, engage with industry about, um, and um, but the policy parameters are set in the salmon plan, and it enables us to have um, a, an engaged conversation with them. Um, but at the end of the day, investment decisions are made by the salmon companies. We are just saying that um, this is the government's um, uh, policy preference and, um, and um, where we would like to see the industry go. Companies can't make investment decisions and they know what's expected of them, so mm. do you have a certain size in mind that they're going to be required to grow out to? Um, 
Through you, Minister, that's part of what our discussions around developing the framework. So there's one part of it is moving further onshore. The other part is going, um, and I think you continue to use the language of offshore, but I think it's perhaps is it higher energy waters. Um, what modelling has been done to the costs and the safety impacts of going into higher energy waters? Okay, so I am going to refer to Dr Dutton, if you're happy. Thank you, Mr. And through you to the member. Um, so looking at the two directions in the new salmon plan, onshore and further offshore, in respect of the question you asked around further offshore, there's really a lot of work being done. The only area we've identified specifically in the plans you may have noted is this, the area offshore from Storm Bay, which is, as you've noted, higher exposure, more high, high energy waters. There's been a, quite a range of modelling work done already and quite a range of baseline assessment work done already by the Institute for Marine Antarctic Studies at UTAS, CSIRO and others as part of the process. Two of those I might mention, one is a um, marine spatial planning analysis that was undertaken a couple of years ago where we looked at the areas that are most suitable around the Tasmanian coastline for future growth opportunities and that identified areas particularly offshore from Storm Bay as being potentially suitable from a biophysical perspective but also uh, from a least, comp uh, least conflict with other uses. So there is that report by IMS that looks at marine spatial planning options analysis. It wasn't a blueprint, it did not define specific areas but it just said here's an area to look at more closely. Related to that there's been a very significant piece of work done by mostly CSRO but with uh, IMS again as I mentioned around biogeochemical modelling. They've looked at the entirety of the storm based system and really tried to understand what are the opportunities there. So there's been a significant amount of work already done that sets the background but obviously any particular proposal put forward by any company mm. will obviously be subject to further assessment and detail. Minister, through you if I might, um, thank you for that. I'm aware of that piece of work. My question was specifically about the um, assessment of economic costs of going into higher energy waters and the safety implications of going into higher energy waters and what work's being done in that area. So we're obviously going to have to have significant engagement with the industry to work through the implementation of that. Um, we know technology is moving... Um, you know, really fast and um, there's exciting opportunities uh, for the industry there. Um, but moving offshore, we, we understand that that is going to take time, um, but really this is a matter for industry. Our government's role is to say this is where um, we would like you to look at further investment. Mm. Um, 